Hey everyone, it's Tiny Tom Logan back with another video for you. And today I've taken five PCI Express 4 NVMe drives, so the M.2 slot on your motherboard, and the latest PCI Express 4 speeds. And we're going to do a little bit of a roundup. Now we have got a mix of some uh, one terabyte and two terabyte drives, just because these are the drives that I have actually been able to get my hands on. But you can get two terabyte versions and one terabyte versions of all of them. But one of the most in, uh, interesting things I think here is I have actually managed to get a sample of the Sabrent drives. And a lot of you at home have been shouting about these. They, they seem to only be available on Amazon. Uh, but I have managed to get hold of one of these for us to test in with some of the other bigger names. Now, I know someone is probably going to shout right early about the fact that we don't have any Samsung in the pack here right at the moment. But that's because at the time of filming, Samsung haven't released the PCI Express 4 drive yet. But when they do, we'll be back to do a full review and we'll have all this data as well. But let's get on and have a look. So straight off of the bat, one thing I will say with all of these drives, and it was something that uh, had come up in my thought process about PCI Express 4 drives, is PCI Express 4 drives do seem to get a little bit warmer than the old PCI Express 3 counterparts. Obviously the uh, memory and the controllers are working that little bit harder because of the extra speed. Because of that, lots of the drives now come with big heat sinks. And that can cause an issue for motherboards that, let's face it, Pretty much all of the X570 boards, because we've tested with an X570 board, because it is rated as being specific PCI Express 4. There's a 3900X in the test system for you as well. Um, so uh, they come with, pretty much all the motherboards come with heat sinks. But thankfully, all of these drives actually come with removable heat sinks, other than the Seagate, which doesn't come with a heat sink at the start. So with the Seagate, one of the things I would say is this is just going to be the sort of drive that you are then going to hide underneath one of your motherboard heat sinks. Um, the Corsair comes with quite a large heat sink on the top. So does the uh, Gigabyte, actually. The Gigabyte one is all copper as well. The only drive that, I mean, the Sabrent does come with, um, the drive comes bare straight out of the packet and you have to feed the heat sink to it. But the heat sink is so massive. It's one of those ones where I would genuinely say this seems to me like the sort of drive that you would then put on one of the Asus vertical mounts. So some of them, they stick straight up out the motherboard. It would look great in that. But some of them have the extra slot by the side of the memory slots. And I'd say that is really the place where you'd, uh, where the Sabrent would you know, would be the best place for it. But like I said, it does come as just a vanilla drive out of the package. So if you weren't going to use that massive, massive heatsink, I'd actually say you'd probably be better off if you're just going to put it on your motherboard and use the motherboard heatsink to keep everything hidden and looking cleaner. Then I would say that you'd be better off buying the Sabrent without the heatsink. And they do, you can buy two versions. And the one without the heatsink is actually cheaper so that's worth keeping in mind it actually arrives without the heat sink and you have to fit it anyway so that's something worth keeping in mind with that one now one of the things i will say is we tested them all as they come out of the box temperature wise without the motherboard heat sink and then we removed all of the heat sinks including the little baby one on the viper uh, we removed all of the heat sinks and then tested it with the motherboard heat sink now, clearly, without a heat sink at all, the uh, Seagate was going to be the warmest because it comes without it. And to be fair, it's probably not designed to even be run like that. So that's why that temperature is there. It, um, we left the result in there just so the, the info is there. We're not trying to make the Seagate look unfairly warm. It's just so that we have a baseline because then you've got no heat sink. The Viper's got a little baby heat sink and then you've got the kind of bigger daddy heat sinks further over with clearly the Sabrent doing the best. But when you pull all of the heat sinks off and then put them on the motherboard, they actually then all perform roughly the same. Now, the, the, all of the um, solid state drives are dual sided, so they do have chips around the back. Uh, which the motherboard obviously doesn't particularly cater for, but the temps did take a drop across all of them. Now, when you warm one side up, it's obviously going to soak through to the other side. So maybe the motherboard heatsink is 
ample enough. The other thing to keep in mind as well is we've used this, this slot. That's going to keep falling over, so I'm just going to stand, put it down. Corsair, we need a little stand for your solid state drive, please. Um, so the, in fact, I'll just lay them all down. Uh, so we also tested with it above the graphics card because it's the warmest place. So it's kind of the spot that we wanted to cover. And the reason why we wanted to cover it in that way was for a worst case scenario. And you might, only, you might have more than one in your uh, system. You also, that might be the only one you've got on your specific motherboard. So that's the reason why we went for it. So if you were to move it down, the temps would drop a little bit as well. You also need to think with the case that we're using, we've got 320 millimeter fans at the top with an AIO, and then there is an uh, indirect uh, three, three times 320 millimeter fans in the front. So we've kind of made it hard for it. The reason why we use this system is because we already had it built. We've been testing some AIOs in it, uh, and it was just easy for us to grab because it was already there and it was already built. So we've not done it in any specific way to try and make things worse or better or anything like that. But the temperatures across the board did take a drop with the motherboard heatsink, which was actually something I wasn't particularly ready for. Uh, with the motherboard heatsink, it is slightly longer because it would have fit a 110 millimeter uh, solid state drive. These are all 80s. But you know, that's something to consider there as well. When it comes to like price with these, I think the uh, Corsair comes in with the one terabyte around 190. Um, but then the two terabyte ones are all around the kind of 380 kind of mark. So they all kind of are around the same sort of price as well. And in reality, because of the performance that's been pinging up on the screen, on this board specifically, they all performed fairly similarly as well. So they've all done a great job of giving us around kind of like 5,000 megabytes a second, um, uh, which is obviously blistering. But these are the first wave of PCI Express 4. Now we do know the Samsung's coming and it could have 6,500 because of a new controller and that sort of thing. But I think being able to get a wide range of these drives together on a table, getting them tested as well, it does kind of give us a few answers. And for me, it would be with the uh, Sabrent specifically, that would this is the drive that I would be grabbing if you wanted to have it on show because it's so massive and you're gonna get better temps with it. The Gigabyte, it would be a shame to take that heatsink off and hide it away because it's copper. I genuinely think this would look great in a uh, old school build, maybe if you've got like copper water blocks, they're starting to kind of come back in and get all kind of like funky and stuff again. But it would be a shame to hide that one away. The Corsair one, the heatsink, is definitely better than the Viper, for example, and it does do really well. Um, but the, in all honesty, with that heatsink on it, I don't think it's pretty enough for me to then want to display it in my system. And with all the new uh, motherboards that are about, that have got all of the, you know, you'd have to take a lot of the heatsinks off to have it on there, I think I'd probably just whiz the heatsink off and go with the motherboard one if I was going to go with that. Uh, with the Viper, it's got a blue PCB. I'd definitely be putting this under a motherboard heatsink no matter what. And I would pull the little heatsink that's on the top of it off just for the sake of um, making things look nicer. Um, but it's, it does well. It's a two terabyte drive as well. It does come in at a decent price and it performed really well. So if this is something that you can get hold of cheaply, you might see it in a sale. It might be the thing that you can get at your local e-tailer or your local shop. It's definitely, they've all performed roughly the same. Um, the Seagate, I think without any heatsink at all, I think this one should have been a bit cheaper. Um, but it didn't have the blue PCB and it's pretty much, if you look at it, identical to the Patriot, apart from it's got a black PCB. And if you were going to be just buying a PCI Express 4 drive to, and you know you're gonna be putting it underneath a motherboard heatsink, uh, and you don't wanna to have to worry about pulling heatsinks off and all of that sort of thing, this is actually the easy option for those of you that are just gonna buy it, fit it, and forget it. So there are lots of options for you there, and it is actually kind of cool that we've um, covered so many bases because it does give you options of which way you would like to go with it. Some of us might go with the Aorus one because of brand loyalty. Some of us might go with the Corsair one again because of the same sort of thing. You might go to Brent because you want it massive or you've got money that you want to spend on Amazon. Uh, and with the Patriot, with the Patriot one, this is the kind of one, I like the Patriot, it's got a decent heatsink on it, 
but the blue PCB and the fact that in reality I probably would pull that heatsink off and run it on a motherboard one. It would be good, I think, if um, Patriot could do one of these without the heatsink on it, knowing that they need to go straight into a board, you know, with the heatsink. A bit like the Seagate. So, lots of information for you there, but they did all do really well. They've all performed very well. It's the temperatures really that have, have varied. But as I've shown, once you put a motherboard heatsink on, they uh, end up performing very similarly. <laughs> Anyway, this has genuinely taken me such a long time to film because I did all of this testing uh, before I left for CES, so I, I am on catch up. It's also why this film uh, or this video may feel a little bit rushed. If you don't know why, go and check one of the other videos on the uh, channel and you'll get an idea. I'm going to put links to all of these underneath, especially the Sabrent because it's obviously on Amazon, but I'll put links to them all underneath. They are not affiliate links either yet. But I am thinking about it, so let me know what you think. I'd like to know your thoughts on this. Don't forget there is lots more data on the OC3D website if you'd like to go and have a look at more graphs and more everything, because there's always a write-up to go alongside the videos. So uh, feedback welcomed underneath. Like, subscribe, comment, hit the bell, all of that sort of stuff. Thank you very much.